And this is what makes this defense so good, is I'm using number 13 on the right here. Once the play starts, you can see there's a huge hole, but these safeties both fill. Number 6 and number 10 are both safeties, and they meet the running back for a very short gain. You're going to see how these cornerbacks from a distance really just fall back and don't do anything on a play like this. I mean, he's so far away from the play. There's nothing coming into his area. It's a matching defense, but these outside cornerbacks aren't matching at all. But now, watch, since I pressed, he's right in this receiver's face. He's going to follow this guy all the way across the field. He's essentially getting double teamed the entire way. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shots. Now we got the Madden Cheese and College Cheese, as always. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys the most improved defense in College Football 25 and Madden 25. Uh, because recently there was an update that said that uh, basically the box call logic for defenses like Cover Four Quarters and Cover Four Palms were improved in both games. I'll go ahead and I'll read you guys what it says here. It says added box call logic to Cover Four Quarters and Cover Four Palms. The better cover bunch formation route combinations. Then it says Dev Note box call logic will dictate which eligible receiver defender picks up slash matches on this is especially effective against bunch formations and will have defenders in the best position to cover their assignments deep zone quarter flat and three red hook defenders will coordinate to make sure all eligible receivers are picked up so that's basically saying that before the patch cover four was really bad to run but now it might be the best deep coverage defense in the entire game as well as being one of the best run defenses one of the best rpo defenses and a lot of other things so i'm gonna show you guys all the stuff that cover four palms and cover four cores can do but before i do as always if you guys want to see more videos like this please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section and if you need more help and more money plays you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top hand comment now that i got through my intro if you guys notice that my voice doesn't necessarily sound the same as it always does that's because i went to the eagles jaguars game uh, my wife got me tickets for my birthday which was on the second so shout out to all the people that gave me happy birthday wishes uh, but a good fan like i am i left my voice in the stadium but i definitely want to show you guys uh the improvements that were made to cover for our quarters and cover for palms I already made some videos in the past about the differences between these two defenses. So if you guys uh, want to see more, I will have links on screen at the end of the video to teach you guys more about cover four palms, especially and cover quarters. Now, as far as the play, they said any bunch formation. The only real bunch formation that Ohio State has is the bunch TE. This is a very good formation because they have a lot of really good plays like the verticals, like the cross drag. We'll go ahead and we'll start off with the verticals play because this is something that three receivers to one side in a bunch like this used to give a uh, cover for a lot of problems so we're going to pick that now all i'm really gonna do we got our matchup here by the way penn state ohio state penn state obviously dropped this one i didn't expect them to win anyway from being honest i just didn't think that their their offense was going to get it done their offense really didn't do anything and that's uh, pretty much what i expected but at the end of the day this is going to be something where typically if you're using this defense you're going to probably want to use this three red hook which I don't necessarily recommend because if you if you listen to what I was reading earlier, they said that the deep zone quarter flat and three-rack hook are all going to communicate to make sure that all eligible receivers are picked up. And since this isn't a man coverage, I can't just make a determination that I'm going to cover over the middle of the field. So let's just go ahead and let's say that I am covering like a regular user and I want to I cover what I see. You can see here if I don't cover the right guy that I might leave somebody wide open. So if you're using cover four quarters and you don't know the print how the principles work and you're using this three-rack hook and you think that, okay, Okay, I'm, I want to cover over the middle. That might not be what the what the computer is expecting you to do. The computer might be expecting you to cover a streak. So if you're using this three-rack hook and you don't use it properly the way the computer is expecting as far as the matching principles are concerned, you can be giving up one-play touchdowns and it's going to be your fault and that's, uh, pretty much. You know, we don't necessarily blame the defense. A better defense might be something like the 3-3 three, three mint here because you can see they have four pass rushers just like the last play. But I would much rather use this linebacker who I could also, if I wanted to, put in like a sub package uh, safety. I don't necessarily have to use the linebacker at all. Now this play here, you can see now I'm on a safety. I can use it wherever I want. But since this is also something that uh, technically has four pass rushers, typically when you send three pass rushers, you'll notice that the pass rush doesn't get anywhere. But since this technically has four and I'm on a pass rush, even though I'm going to be dropping back, I'm still going to get the benefit of the four pass rushers. You're going to see here, if I just kind of stand down over the center here, it's going, to, it's going to think that I'm pass rushing. And then I can really cover wherever I want. And you can see nothing was really open there as he has to take the check down for really no gain. So this is something where um, I can use this all game. I don't have to mess up the matching principles. I don't have to 
get in the way of whatever the three rec hook is supposed to do and you can see we get like i said we still get good pressure because that's pretty much how this game's designed it's still reading that i have four pass rushers so you're still going to see how i'll get sheds even though you might not previously get that if you only really have three pass rushers you're not going to get these type of sheds now next up i want to show the difference between cover four quarters and cover four palms both of these defenses will act the same when it comes to run plays when it comes to cover four quarters or cover four palms which i should have in my audibles because i typically keep cover four palms in my audibles uh, both of these safeties will drop down and play the run. So if you want to bring them down to the box, you're going to see how they're going to act like extra linebackers. If I'm expecting the run, I have no issue uh, using uh, the three-rack hook here. And then obviously you're going to want to pitch the defensive line because you want to take away that, uh, you know, the, 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 the closest distance between two points is a straight line. So you want to close that up. And if you can get him to the outside, that's perfectly fine. I'm moving the linebacker here just to make sure the play doesn't start. But if you get this guy to run uh, laterally, you're going to see that's always going to be the best way to go. Uh, you can also hard flat. I find that... You you know, hard flying is going to be better for outside run containment as well. This is how it set up my run defense as I was running this some, against somebody who's running the ball a lot. But like I said, we're going to let the safeties make the play here as we're just going to let the play start. You can see the safety, if you're watching the safeties, they walk down. As this safety didn't necessarily make the play, but watch how he takes a few steps forward. This is something that, if it's a play action, can get this safety in trouble, which is something I've showed in other videos as well. But against the run, you're going to see how he walks forward into the hole and basically acts like an extra linebacker. On the other side, Side. I'm pretty sure 41 did the exact same thing. Let's go ahead and let's watch that linebacker or this uh, safety here. You can see he takes steps forward. He's away from the play, but this is what you're going to want. If you're trying to stop the run, you're going to want everybody in the box. The only person who's not going to drop down is going to be these outside cornerbacks. They're the only people that are going to play the pass no matter what because they're the only people that don't have run fits. The safeties in this particular defense have run fits, which is why they're going to step down and play the run fill like, like middle linebackers. But you can see these cornerbacks, they follow those routes the entire way. So what this defense essentially looks like is a nine-man run commit. And that was cover four quarters, but we can switch over to cover four palms, and you're going to see it's going to be the exact same thing. Like I said, you don't have to bring these safeties down, but I'll bring them closer. Like I said, if I expect somebody running the ball a lot, I'm going to bring them closer. This is going to be my look. I also want to drop this guy back because this will help me shoot gaps when it comes to run plays. And you can see we get pretty, pretty, I missed the play there, but you can see both of the safeties make the play to back me up. And this is what makes this defense so good is I'm using number 13 on the right here once the play starts you can see there's a huge hole but these safeties both fill number six and number 10 are both safeties and they meet the running back for a very short gain but the main difference is going to be what they do against rpo plays so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to pick an actual rpo play which would be the stretch alert bubble the main difference between cup for quarters which is what i'm in now and cup for palms is what these quarter flats are going to do if i hit both left trigger and right trigger and hold the b button all at the same time it'll bring up my run fits if you guys don't know how to do that and you'll notice that both of these defenses have the exact same run fits but it doesn't change the fact that the cover for palms is going to react differently than the cover for quarters. So we're in cover for quarters right now, like I said. So let's go and let's let the RPO play run. You're going to notice the safeties are still going to walk down. But the cornerback on the left side or the, the quarter flat on the left side there, if you weren't watching, played the run. Now, they, they handed off the ball anyway, so I'll go ahead and I'll just run it again to see if they throw it out. But watch this guy here, number 41. He runs inside, gets trapped on a block, and that's going to be the main difference is he's going to still play the run first. So highlighting my quarter flat on that side, you're going to notice he steps inside to play the run once again, and that's why he allows this guy to catch the ball outside, where the cup for palms, quarter flat will not do that. So if I switch over to cup for palms, which is in my audibles, number one, you notice right away, he took a step outside. That alone shows you that he's prioritizing that outside defender. And him being outside even more is going to be more of a help. If I bring him all the way outside here so that there's no real chance of either one of those receivers hitting him, that's going to be best. As you can see there, he still kind of drops back, but he doesn't step inside. As you can see here, the main difference this time is now that we're in cup for palms is that he's not going to step inside. He's going to step outside towards the receivers. So now that we see that the cup for palms will prioritize those passing routes, if we want him to be more aggressive, all we really have to do is once again play underneath. Now, if it's a pass play, this will override the matching principles of the deep safeties. But at the same time, if you're running against somebody that you know that they're running a lot of uh, plays like this, you're going to want to go ahead and put them on a hard flat. And then you can also press. 
because pressing animations in cover four have a, a different effect, but I'll go over that in a minute. So now we have probably our best defense when it comes to, to stopping RPOs. As you'll notice, this hard flat, even though I overrode the uh, the quarter flat, it's still going to react the same way. It's still going to play the pass. It's just going to do it at a much better angle. So let's go and let's run the play now. Now you can see, you know, the, the computer is most likely not going to throw it out there based off the fact that I have this defense set up the way that I have it. The computer is making the decision based off of what 41 does. When 41 steps in, when this quarter flat steps in, he's going to he's going to hand he's going to throw it out. When he steps out, he's going to hand it off. It's really that simple. But a user's not necessarily going to do that. There's a lot of different things you can do with cover four to make this defense even better. So let's go and let's pick cover four course once again. I want to show you guys a matching style defense uh, trick that you guys can use, especially if your opponent is using a spread offensive formation like this, where a lot of times they might want to beat you with like crossing routes and quick slants to try to mess up uh, the outside cornerbacks because this is not a man coverage. This is a matching coverage where the cornerbacks can switch. And using things like quick slants can really do uh, a lot of favors when it comes to getting the guys open against this defense. So let's go and let's pick that play. I'm just going to go ahead and run it just to show you guys that, uh, you know, you can see how you can find space in these, especially when it comes to uh, the outside uh, the outside slants because these cornerbacks are playing back kind of far. They don't necessarily get in the way of these routes. There we get some pressure, but this is a trick a lot of people will use. Now, if I want to, I can press these cornerbacks outside. If I hit wire triangle and down the left stick, you're going to see how I press these cornerbacks. And now these cornerbacks are going to man match. When you press and cover four, these outside cornerbacks, which in the previous plays, you might have noticed, were really just kind of standing back and waiting for crossing routes. If I go to the, if I go to this, um, the replay here, you're going to see how these cornerbacks from a distance really just fall back and don't do anything on a play like this. I mean, he's so far away from the play. There's nothing coming into his area. It's a matching defense, but these outside cornerbacks aren't matching at all. And you can see how these safeties get crossed up because they are matching trying to cover these routes. But now that I'm pressing, you're going to see how these cornerbacks are going to basically man align with these outside cornerbacks. Now that I'm in a press, their awareness, I think, is what makes this happen. They're going to, their awareness is going to take over and make sure that these outside cornerbacks follow these receivers the entire time. So you can see here, they're no longer just standing around doing nothing as we get a sack. And if we go to the instant replay, you're going to see how, once again, this cornerback on the last play was doing nothing. But now, watch, since I pressed, he's right in this receiver's face. He's going to follow this guy all the way across the field as he's essentially getting double teamed the entire way before we get a sack. And now they're pressing on the other side. You can see the exact same result as he runs the route for this guy, basically just shutting him down the entire play. Now, I showed all the things this defense can stop, and there's a lot. It's a very good, it's maybe the best deep pass defense in the game right now. Definitely the best RPO defense, definitely the best run defense. But one thing that gives it a lot of problems is empty backfield looks. Uh, gun empty formations like this. One of the better plays I'm going to predict is probably going to be the all go. Let's go and let's pick that. When it comes to the style of defense, there's four deep zones. So all you really need to beat this defense is five routes that go over 10 yards. I've gone over this in my ebooks. I've gone over this in previous videos on this particular play. To me, the four deep zones react any to any route to go over 10 yards. So if I put all these routes, say, under 10 yards okay let's just go ahead and let's just put all these routes to uh to less than 10 yards just to show you guys that these four deep zones aren't necessarily going to react because none of these routes they're all just dropping back there none of these routes are over 10 yards so pretty much all the deep zones are just hanging back until something crosses the area that's how they're programmed they're programmed to react to routes over 10 yards so let's go to the replay here just to show you guys the safeties particularly they're not reacting to anything the only guy that actually reacts is to this out route that might be the deepest route on the field it's just like a speed out route you can see it is the deepest route there's no routes deeper but the safeties are just dropping back they're not going to drop down on those short routes because they're waiting for a route to go past 10 yards so knowing that if i have five guys at the line of scrimmage which is why this works best in an empty backfield look because it doesn't necessarily work best if you go say in a four wide with the running back running the fifth route the fifth route from the running back will just get matched by either the three rack hook or the quarter flat but if they're all at the line of scrimmage they don't really have the the time to react to the uh, to the deep route so if i put x here on a comeback route i'll put b on a comeback route also those are over 10 yards and then i put y on a post you're going to see one of the three receivers i don't even know which one but one of the three receivers between y a and rb is going to get open because these outside cornerbacks are going to react to their route in their area as now we have three deep routes over 10 yards and only two guys that know they're supposed to be responsible although like i said i'm sure we'll get a quarter flat or a three rack hook as you can see right there that guy's just running butt naked down the middle of the field i don't know who was supposed to cover that maybe the quarter flat maybe the three rack hook i have to watch the replay to find out as you'll notice that um who, i don't even know who got open but let's go and let's follow the guy that got open a got open or 10 got open and you can see here 
that I think the guy is supposed to react is the quarter flat because he's reacting way too late. This is the, the the main issue when it comes to this defense. It's like, yeah, you do have matching principles, and Seven will eventually communicate with everybody else on the field to know that that's his guy, but he's already behind the he's already 10 yards behind. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more stuff that I went over about this defense uh, early on when college football came out, I'm going to pop it up on the screen right now. So just click links, and until next time, thanks for watching, man. Wish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.